Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter Igaga, and you are watching your favorite show, Men. Now, tonight we have a special episode which takes into account a lot of the things that have been going on within the sphere of Uganda. A wise man said that religion is the opium of the masses. So you need to decide tonight, are you part of the masses that have been taken up by this opium, who've gotten intoxicated to the extent that you go and start kissing some people's shoes? Stay with us as we talk about religion and how you can best reach God. Now, this is a tough one, guys. Let's just call it a spade a spade. And the good thing is we have two gentlemen on the set with us who are not guests. They've been here once, twice, thrice, four. So they're, they're basically part of us. So I want to throw it out there, and I'll start with you, Colin, before we, we'll start there. You know, there's a wave, even in some places of worship, there's a wave. Okay. There's a wave sweeping. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. What's the now, question? there's this wave that's currently sweeping our country. Mm -hmm. To some people, it's a good thing because we're seeing a lot of people who are in need to reach God. But my personal question is, are we going about it the right way? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I think, I mean, I've, I've always thought that there's a... <laughs> I think that don't forget the man he actually is a pastor <laughs> the science the science says that there's a direct correlation between uh, growth in incomes in economies and the level of secularism in the society yes, so and, and because of that the reverse is true the more religious society certain societies tend to be your countries then the more likely you are to see despairing levels of poverty yeah. and and this the, 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 the theory behind it is and I, I, there was a video on this online that uh, people who people who are religious tend to abdicate the responsibility of digging themselves out of poverty to a higher power. That belief allows them to have hope to work every day. They, they, they are they're able to go on in the current condition, whereas people who don't have the faith or the hope that tomorrow will be a better day just tend to fix it. They just say, you know what, I've got to do this. I have to do what I need to do today to get out of this position. I cannot sleep hungry again. I cannot suffer because, you know, I need to do what I need to do. And those societies, you know, generally tend to have more hardworking people, people who are more, well, willing to, to, to withstand uh, injustice and, and, and uh, flawed types of democracy. I think that the rise of the, 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 the what you're saying is it's a reflection of the fact that people are hurting. People are hurting, and that could be, you know, economic-wise, but it could also just be, you know, just spiritually. People are just hurting. They're looking for answers. And these people, uh, whether they're right way or not, and we can sit here as men and judge, but someone, somewhere is giving an answer to these people. True. Do I think it's right? No. Do I have my thoughts on it? Yes, and I think... That's why across the span of the show will unravel that, but, but that's what I think. I think that, that, that the supply that we're seeing is answering a certain demand in the market. All right, great stuff. Now, Chris, you are a church leader, okay? So you lead a flock by default. Um, are we seeing a thirst for leadership and direction, in, especially in Uganda at the moment? And generally, I'll say across um, Africa, because there's this rise of apostles, of um, prophets, 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 you know, and people who, are, are even bishops, who I don't know where they get, who ordains them into that, but they're, they've, they've got that. And it's sweeping across. Christianity is nothing new to us, okay? But why now? Why now what? Is this wave coming? And there's I... so much hunger. I, I think that it's important to note that the state of the human heart has literally always been the same. There's always been a, a vacuum in the hearts of, of people for, for God, um, at least from my perspective, because, you know, you have a creator, there's a connection with a creator, and and and. We've always tried to find him in African traditional religion before we got to know about Christianity. There was always that search. You go to China and the Orientals, there was that search. You know, so whether we're talking about Christianity or Islam or whatever, there's always been a search to connect with God. That, that gap 
in, in the human condition has always been there. Um, while there may be certain difficult or unseemly things going on in particular areas, I think it's important for us to not to throw out the baby under water. And, and for me, that's a bit of the concern that I have, that if, if, uh, if people who are leading others um, on the spiritual front do not conduct themselves well, they can get to have a huge number of people shun God and shun a relationship and shun a knowledge or a way of doing things that could have otherwise been helpful to them. So I think that it's important that we're careful with that. The third thing is it's important for um, many of us who are in church leadership to realize that, that you have a responsibility toward the people you lead. You have a responsibility to God. In fact, there's a scripture that says that those who teach the word are going to be judged harsher or more strictly than others. Because everything that comes out of our mouths, everything that we pass on, um, uh, God doesn't take lightly because you are affecting lives, like real lives. And I think that said, what I see is, um, is that there's, there's need for more wisdom on how we deal with certain things. Um, and I'd, I'd like that to be my opening shot. Okay, cool. Um, Stefan, you've been at the center of a lot of controversy when it came to airing your opinion <laughs> about the way some of the things have been going on. What is happening? Are we getting lost or are we finding ourselves? I'll say that uh, I think the reason why this is happening is because uh, you know, uh, people realize that they can actually make money out of religion. It's become a business. And uh, if you have noticed is that, uh, if, if you have noticed one thing, is that uh, uh, preachers, pastors are targeting the middle class. It's no longer the, the hopeless guy down there. Mm -hmm. They have realized that, you know what, I can actually make money out of this middle class. And, uh, and, and because of the hopelessness in the society right now, it's achievable. And uh, I, I just think that, you know, someone out there a clever guy is taking advantage of uh, really vulnerable, you know, gullible people. A lot. Great stuff. Now, Captain, if I may look at it from a historical point of view, there has always, and this is when I want you to put on your politician's cap, there has always been a close relationship between politics and religion, everywhere in the world, since time immemorial, um, to the extent that even in um, a lot of the European countries, their, their monarchies are what their governments were, were based on. Now, is it, can we then say that a lot of these new age churches are doing something wrong or they're just doing what has always been done? Well, let, let's start it from this way. God is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. He's everywhere. Yeah. That's the beginning. And in Genesis chapter 1, they taught us the creation of the world. And that was, that was the preaching, and that is the preaching. In uh, the, the atheists say that religion is the fear of the unknown. So we start that definition from that point. But the position that I would like to say that the longest battles that have been fought in the world are based fundamentally on religion or land. So these two areas that you're venturing into are highly controversial. Land and religion. religion. That's why you find that the political leaders manage both land, mainly land and the people. And that's why they say science I and mean politics is the science of the management of society. That society is where the political angle comes in. And most of the time, you'll see that the religious leaders say, leave matters of religion to the religious leaders. Leave it to us. And the politicians also say, no, matters of politics and governance, leave it to us. But to come to answer your question, I think 
uh, and fundamentally, this is a very important point that needs to be underscored. And my brother raised a very fundamental point. When he said that the issues of poverty, mainly poverty, relate more fundamentally to religion. And you see, the original churches, when you look at the historical basis, the original churches are mainly, in terms of Christianity, we are the Catholics. And when Martin Luther King, Martin Luther, um, was excommunicated from the Catholic Church, when he was preaching what he called anti-disestablishmentarianism, that preaching now created the Church of England for the Pentecostal Church now. I mean, the Church of Protestant. England, the Protestant Church. Yes, yes, yes. Now, in the, in the process <coughs> of preaching, there was another offspring, mainly from the Protestant Church to the Pentecostal churches. These Pentecostal churches seem to have attracted more people. They have had the affinity to attract more people into their following, into their flock. And mainly in the African continent, and in, in South America, and now mainly in, um, in North America, in certain, in certain provisions. The question now is the teaching. And that's why we say that at the political level, the Constitution gives you the right of worship. And that is a fundamental right, which is in the UN. But I think now, the, what is raising what you call the moral and ethical matter is the level at which our people are being duped. And in the Bible, they say, always be afraid and be careful about false prophets. It's in the Bible, false prophets. Now, when I see people going in and being duped to lick somebody's shoes. But Captain, question. It's a choice. Yes. <laughs> I mean, nobody has been forced to do that. True. So how can uh, uh, you the can't choice say one choice. Yeah. No, but again, let's let's look at it this way. Somebody says, "I have gone to heaven, and I met Jesus, and, and God was not around, and God was not around, <laughs> but, but God is omniscient <laughs> and is omnipresent." Yeah, that's correct. God is omniscient, <laughs> omnipresent, <laughs> and omnipotent. Yes. yes. And I came back, mm -hmm. having met Jesus in heaven. Yeah. Now, that would be the first person to go to heaven and come back. Yeah. Fundamentally. First of all, if, if I, in all honesty, if I were him, I would not come back. I'd so, the point, the point I'm trying to say is that, <laughs> you see, this is where the argument of logic comes in. Yeah. And it would be terribly worrying to see our people moving into that direction. And more so, to see innocent people people who are lured into collecting water, they say that is holy water. Yeah. Holy, from yeah. holy from where? Holy from where? These rise. are fundamental yeah. logical questions. And that's why you find that people who have capacity and who have the means and who are logical um, cannot go that level, cannot sink to that level. But because of the disparity of life, the social being, you'll find that somebody has got HIV and AIDS Science tells you that you cannot cure HIV and AIDS, but the preacher comes and tells you, I will cure you of HIV and AIDS. Here you are totally disabled by polio. Science tells you very clearly that polio dis the dismembers your nerves and your body, uh, the body uh, physiology. Mm -hmm. And here is somebody coming in and creating a movement of a person who has got Polio, who has suffered polio all his life. Now, these are questions that raise a lot of fundamental questions. Why isn't this preaching in the Catholic Church? Why isn't this preaching in the original um, Anglican, Church. Anglican Church? Why isn't this preaching in Islam? Nabi Muhammad, peace be upon him, never preached in this order. He never healed in this order. Now, this is where you get into a very serious concern. Are we now dealing with false prophets? We'll get to that. Now, we do have to go into a break. Now, we're here at the Sheraton Kampala Hotel talking about religion. Now, we want to hear from you. 
go to our Facebook page, like it, engage in the discussions that are going on there, or you can follow us on Twitter. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back from the break. In case you've just joined us, we are here at the Sheraton Kampala Hotel on Men, which is proudly brought to you by Obulamu. And we are talking about religion, which in very many cases seems to be the opium of the mind. Banji, this intoxication. Yes. Um, I want to look at religion. Uh, I want to make three, three or two-ish comments about uh, religion. One is the purpose that uh, religion serves. And I want to spread the religion in the middle, science at the right side, and magic at the left side. Now, human nature has always sought for explanations. You know, the, the human mind has two, two parts. The part which is logic, which where you can find answers and explanations for things that are happening in your life and society. Then there is the spirit, where when we fail to get explanations, we go now to the spiritual part, okay? And now this is where people begin asking. So normally, in many uh, pre-modern societies, people would resort when they would fail their minds to grasp things. People would resort to magic. Okay. To magic, to witchcraft, to that kind of seeking explanation to the ancestors. In Africa, we would say you consult the, the oracles, the yeah. ancestors, to give you explanations. Then, once we became organized, we moved to religion. Uh, of course, we had our African kind of religion. But then we got Christianity, which was more organized, uh, more around a central theme, and uh, of course also... Um, Islam was also around a central theme. So whatever magic would not explain, religion would explain. Now, science improved. Okay? Science was more accurate. They, now doctors can tell you that you have three days to live. And indeed you will die. But the Christian people, the religious people tell you that is the work of God to determine how many days you have. So now, and that feeds in what Colin said at the beginning that it depends on the level of development of society or the level of human need of the person. If you have resources, you are more likely to go to science for an explanation. Okay, why is this happening to me? If you cannot afford science or if science cannot explain, the tendency of a human being is to revert back to religion. What explanation do I get? That's the first comment. The second comment I want to, to, to bring forth... We're just going to give you the whole second segment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Give it to me. You took the first. The second comment I want to associate religion with the politics and governance. And the, I, I, I might be going to um, difficult waters here. But over the years, historically, religion has been used as a tool. As a tool of political administration. Now, when your society has many problems, numerous problems, you would rather have the man of God to tell them the word, you know, and tell them that things will be okay. In your poverty, things will be okay. In your ill health, things will be okay. In your unemployment, things will be okay. Come and pray. When humans, when we have problems that we cannot explain, or that we cannot fix, or that, that we, out of our control. Yes, so we tend to look for an outer power, what we call a higher power, and that's when people go to mm. religion. Mm. And third and lastly, briefly, it's about the method of delivery. Mm. How are these men of God delivering their message? Mm. Okay, because the Catholics, the people say they give it in a boring, you know, slow fashion. It may not be that intoxicating. But when you go to a church where, you know, the, the word of God is given in a way that even your bones begin shaking, <laughs> then the likelihood of attracting as many people as possible, and then you, you, you end up having a cult. Yeah. Okay? You become a cult. You, you become authority. People want to touch Jesus because you have seen Jesus. Then 
I think I think I, I want to I want to just I just I just, I just want to go into yeah. springboard off of this and go back and touch back into something that the, 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 the captain said. So it is true that whereas it has traditionally religion has been a way to administer the masses, you you're seeing the shift from the lower end. So we still have the Biwempe churches, the, the, the sharks, the ones which are still like that. But the, the move now is where we are harvesting slightly more older fish, you know, where we are harvesting from a higher, with a higher yield. And that's who we're targeting. But the interesting, the interesting thing isn't so much that we, the, 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 the false prophets are harvesting from higher in, income earning individuals. It is the mindset that, that has created, why are these people, why are the middle class so desperate for success? And I think you have to look into that. Why is there so much pressure to succeed that all of a sudden you're willing to forget all the principles that got you here? Years of hard work, going to school, dedication, saving, all the things that brought you from 20 to 35. And at 37, you take your land title and you give it to someone. You take your, your family car and you seed it into, into something. So, so, and, and I'm not saying these things are wrong because, again, as, as we've said, faith is a personal choice. And once you get in there, it's hard to logically come out. There's no way to logically argue someone out of faith because it's, it's emotional. But, but the question is why? Why is it now there in that, in that middle class? Why are they so willing to believe this? Now, because this certainly isn't the behavior that got them where they are, with their jobs, with their careers. Exactly. Why is it now all of a sudden that they're there, they're they, they willing to believe this? What, what are they hungering for that's so, that, that, that makes them gullible and willing to believe this? And I think... Sapita, yeah, yeah, I, uh, Chris, I, just before you, you get the answer that, because it, it ties in also to something I wanted to bring. Um, can we then blame the traditional churches? Because that's where we were originally. Um, by the time I was growing up, I think there were like four Pentecostal churches. Okay, now they're everywhere. And there's this shift. I know the gospel, uh, the, the prosperity gospel is a huge thing. People now want to be told what they want to hear. They're told, you know what, right now, and it's, it's one of the challenges I have with modern day Christianity. Um, all we are told about is the good life. Nobody tells you about suffering. Nobody tells you about pain. Nobody tells you about the wrath of God. It's like God is happy. I mean, no, it, uh, for all, all, lots of... Our God is it, rich. Yes, but there's okay. a wrath of God. He even so, tells us we need to that's fear that's him. So, but so, that's so, no longer so, there. Um, you've just asked like seven questions. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I, think, I think it would be good for us to to take a huge step back, probably go more than 2,000 years back and start from Jesus. Because uh, what we're seeing is an argument of, is that what it was like with Jesus? Because um, when you listen to some of the arguments of, 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 of people kissing the feet of someone and they say, you know, that's what uh, was done to, I don't know who, or, you know, mm. Moses appeared as God or whoever, Jesus, you know, had people fall at his feet. And, and it's an embodiment of him and things like that. That, that, that. that can be a bit murky. So I want us to go back to clarity. Clarity being, if we're to understand this Christian thing and what's going on to say whether it's right or wrong, um, go back to Christ. Um, how he lived. Jesus performed miracles. He healed the sick, um, lame walked, deaf ears opened, blind eyes saw. All right? raised the dead and did that kind of stuff and he said and these signs shall follow they that believe me in my name they'll cast out demons they'll raise the, they'll raise the dead they'll heal the sick okay um i have been in church circles since i was seven i have attended a number of crusades i have stood next to a man who i saw was clearly lame um when tl osborne was here for example many years ago in the 80s and i saw the lame man walk you see, the things I have seen, the things I have touched with my own hands are not experiences you can take away from me. But you know Wait, let me finish. Okay. So, so, so matters of God intervening in human life and, and having blind eyes see, deaf ears hear, lame men walk, 
are real. Sicknesses healed are real. Okay, I'm not ashamed to say that I, on, on a regular, pray for people and they're healed. So how do you do this? Okay, so, wait, let me finish. Okay. You're, you're, you've all had your peace, so please allow me. Please allow me. You pray for people and they get healed. Yes, yes. Wait, wait, wait. You, you would see it. So, 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 why I said in the beginning that the while there may be certain things that are done by someone that are uncomfortable, we need to be careful not to throw out the baby under water. That's where I started. Okay? Um, I, because there are certain things that are uncomfortable for me as well. Right? And by the way, while we're at feet kissing, uh, Banji, my very devout Catholic man, um, uh, people kiss the Pope's feet. And, and, and the last time I checked, no one is making noise about that. Okay? So, 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 so I'm not saying it's right to kiss the Pope's feet. I'm just saying it's happening in other places as well. Now, when, when Jesus um, had, he had disciples uh, who he raised, mentored, um, and they took over after he left. Okay? And as, as more and more people became followers of Christ, it was called the way. Okay? Most of the known world at that time called it a cult. So Christianity was not a religion. It was a cult. There was a group of followers of Jesus. Who were, okay? who were persecuted. But as, as the years went on and Constantine became a Christian, that's about 250 years after Christ, right? Um, uh, he made Christianity the official religion For in the Rome. whole Roman Empire. Okay, and that's when religion came in. The way of men trying to organize and control access to God through a certain structure. On and on and on and on. So when we talk about original religion and whatever it is, if you go all the way back to Christ, he didn't leave a religion. He didn't leave Catholics, Anglicans, Baptists, Pentecostals, and all the Easts that there are. He left followers of his way that through his way people may have life. Now, when you look at all the years, it's all gotten murky. And I can tell you that every man here on this set will have a problem with the way God has been presented. But every man on this set, if we're honest, will have a certain time when we were stuck and we asked God for help and he came through. I think everyone here would say so, whether it's in business, you know, or, or home or family. If you're chasing a big deal, two hundred million dollars. Why are you pointing at Captain? No, I'm, I'm just telling. <laughs> you, I mean, you guys don't do million dollars. Ouch! Yeah. Ouch! Ouch! No, ouch. That's the truth. <laughs> okay. Million dollars. Yeah. You can see yeah. who the so, 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 yeah. so, But if you're chasing a deal of two hundred million dollars, <laughs> if you're chasing a deal of two hundred million dollars, and you really want it to work through, you will pray. You're, some, go, you're some, going to ask God for help. Sometimes you will say a prayer. Okay. It Not may sometimes. be in the you dead pray of the like night at four a.m. So, 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 so here's the thing. There is an intervention of God in the matters of life. And then, and then, and then, real quick, and then I know that, that we do, we, our lives are not just explained through the spiritual. They're explained through finances. They're explained through intellect. They're explained through health and well-being. And they're explained through family relations and, and friend relations. So there is a holistic way of looking at life. And I think that, that where we fail is where there is um, an emphasis to a fault of one thing and, and not com considering a holistic look at life. And I think that that's, that's where the conversation needs to be had. We're going to get back to you straight after the break. One of the things I do agree with you is, unfortunately, that is what, in the most recent setting, I'm not shy to say, with... Um, uh, his, his prophet Mbonye, okay? That has been at the forefront. It has been pushed on social media. Whether positively or negatively, it has gained a lot of traction. Now, the levels of curiosity, I guarantee you, his, his next do whatever is going to be full. The people in, 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 in our office who just want to go and see, that's what they're saying. They just want to go and see what's happening there. Yes, they will. That will be the only way for them to get there. Now, we're here at the Sheraton Kampala Hotel talking about religion and the route to God. Is the way we're going the right way? We'll be right back after the break.
Welcome back from the break. In case you've just joined us, we're here at the Sheraton Kampala Hotel talking about religion. This show is proudly brought to you by Oblamu. Don't forget, we want to hear from you. Go to our Facebook page and like it. Engage in the discussions that are going on there. Or you can follow us on Twitter. Our individual handles are right there on your screen. Now, guys, yes, religion. Um, there's been a lot of marketing. Okay, So religion has become more like a business. The only way you can succeed, especially with the churches, because I can dare talk about that, is if you market yourself well. So have we reached a point where actually we have to sell God to the people? Right, sir. I think um, one thing we need to understand about what we call the Pentecostal movement or the millennial religions. I think the tricky issues are in the institutional structure. Because when you look at uh, the, 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 these other religions, the, the, the Anglican, the Catholic, the Islamic, there is a structure. There is a hierarchy. And, uh, and, and, and Chris rightly validated my argument when I said that religion Previously, historically, has been used as a tool of administration. I mean, of political administration. Um, fortunately for us in Uganda, we are a non-state religion, so you can do whatever you, you can for. worship or believe in whatever you want to believe in, and and, and this is the this is the the, 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 the magic or the, the 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 good part of of, of, of our um, our religious system. But then, in there lies the problem, okay? Because every institution. And, and I'm giving this one from a point of view of social control. How do you control an institution when it gets out of control? Who controls it? Because you've seen here churches, certain parishes of certain uh, uh, churches being suspended until they correct their ways. And when they are corrected, they correct themselves, they are readmitted to the main fault. Now here you have a, a, a church or a religion where someone, the pastor, is the boss. He's the capo. The, he's not reporting to anyone. There's but no accountability. Uh, there is no, so the, my question here is about accountability. How do you demand accountability and then how do you defend the followers? Because uh, if you go to many medical settings, there are people who have especially chronic illnesses, such as AIDS uh, and the like. And someone is given medication and when they go, just say, throw away the medication. Do you believe in God? You are healed. Go home, you are healed. Then the following day, someone is brought to the facility in a bad state. And when you ask, they say, no, no, I'm not taking medicine because I have been told that I've been healed by God. Yes, we don't dispute the fact that God heals. Okay? So how do we demand accountability? And I think this is what probably is raising um, kind of... Uh, Oh, yes, but also secondly, I want to look at the, 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 the current form of uh, information and communication. Mm. Presently, if a pastor or a priest does something, it's, it, it, it saturates quickly. It's viral. It is viral. Like and mm. uh, it, 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 whether it is correct or not, we, we, we have now also created, human beings are naturally, we, we have this kind of wanting to explore. So if miracles are being performed in a church, and I am sorry, I am a Catholic, but I have not seen a miracle happen in my church for the last 20 years. Mm. Why not go where the miracle is happening mm. and I see? Mm. And probably when I get there, I will, I will also now become, you know, spread the word and call other people to go and witness uh, these miracles. So I think at the moment uh, it is that they and these uh, priests have learned that now the information can easily get out. Mm. So mm. they will mm. use mm. whatever mm. they can to put this word out mm. and get the best out of it. And I think that you can't, you can't, you can't understate the value of branding and marketing. Yeah. So you see, the, the, the traditional institutions were, I'm sorry, but it's no, no, very <laughs> conservative. <Yeah. laughs> no, it's, it's where I'm from, but it's, uh, traditional institutions were very, they were not strong on branding and they marketing. They were conservative. But yeah. now, I mean, you see, 
it's the color it's the audiovisual system the Charisma. sound has to be right the razzmatazz the lights the fireworks the the, even even, the, rugby even the, the highway yes, yeah, even yes, the, uh, the, uh, the way you arrive the way but even just like the social media posts has to be right with the right colors the right messaging boom boom There's boom a certain celebrity in the picture yes, yes. just to market it i think that um, I'm a believer. If you look at our social setting now, and let's talk about the urban centers, even the rural, we have three major challenges our society face. One is high levels of poverty. Then two, unemployment. Then number three is high levels of ignorance. These three, when they are compounded, you now can be subject to manipulation. It can be political mani manipulation. It can also be religious manipulation. It can be, it can go in any direction. And that's why you want to understand, first of all, the setting of most of these churches. If you look at the traditional churches, if you look at the teaching of the two major religions in the world now, one, Christianity, and the Muslims. The two leaders, the two major leaders who carried the message on behalf of God. If you look at Jesus, he had a life, a lifestyle which was rotating around simplicity. Simplicity. And in the, in, 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 in the English language, they tell you that simplicity and, uh, uh, and, 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 and um, humility is a virtue. And you see that what Jesus told, the message that he carried, is the one that generated the appetite for people to join in and become believers. It was about the message. And when you look at Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his humility, his ability to humble himself to a very simple person, again, you'll see that that is what has generated the affinity for people to join and become believers, or those followers of Islam. Now, when you look at these two, when you look at these two paradigms, the narrative you want to pick out of this is that when you juxtapose, when you now relate it to the current preachers, the opulence that is accompanying the Pentecostal churches, for example, the opulence of most of these leaders uh, driving in the best and the latest vehicles or flying the best uh, jets. You know, some, of, some of them have better aircraft than most African leaders. <laughs> I'm a pilot professional. <laughs> but you have somebody having um, um, uh, well, some of the most, uh, most Gulfstream 650 advanced. advanced or flying in a Boeing that is uh, made, and yet the followers, the people who Fine come in too. for, who are his believers, are wallowing in deep poverty. Their life is not changing by the day. That's why I say that, yes, all of us who are believers raise our hands or humble ourselves in the darkness of the night or in your own connectivity with God. Put your, and you, you go down on your knees, put your head, hands together and pray to the Almighty and say, I have this problem. Please help me. And that's you find that Jesus taught us that the only way the only way to God is through me. Now, all this is what creates the creates that throws in the spanner in the works, the thinking to say, wait a minute, you have departed from the man who brought out this Bible. Do you, you see, the thing no, is that I totally just, agree. Just, just before but, but, we get there, we, 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 hold on, guys. Be, before we get there, before we get there, we are out. No man, no, no. Peter, you're such a bad host. No, I'm really you're sorry. You're a useless host. <laughs> Time is, is, is the one that's okay, about. But we will definitely have another show about that. So, Colin, I'll start with you. Your party again. Shows. Okay. So, yeah. um, in closing, just quickly, yeah. one minute. I've always had a problem with, and and people keep saying that I'm a rebel and, and I'm, you know, anti-establishmentarian. But but people have to ask questions. We have to be able to ask the questions. And you don't have to find the answers. And asking questions doesn't mean you're going to stop going to church or stop believing. But asking the questions allows you to do some critical thinking. 
and, and, I, and I fear that a lot of people are afraid to do that. Because, again, as, as the captain said, when you're unemployed and you're poor and you're, and you're not informed, you don't know where to look for answers. But you see, the, for me, the issue is that this isn't, this is just the latest craze in people, the same people who got caught in World Ventures got caught in Telex Free. Who then got caught in, what was the third one? Uh, it was Telex Free and forex it was trading. Forex Trading. Yeah. And now they get caught in this. It means that it's a, it will pass and there'll be someone else who'll figure out Bitcoin, one coin or something. Those, I mean, it's always someone trying to make money from some poor people. So ask questions. Go on the internet. It's free. These days, MBs are 200 shillings. Go on the internet. Look for something. Find some information. Because, I, I mean, at the end of this show, we're always trying to give people practical advice. So whenever you see something, just look up these people. See where they went to school. Ask someone, do you know where that person went to school? What were they like when they were in secondary school? If no one has ever gone to school with the child, please, please just know we're dealing with a serial killer. Or treat them as a hostile until you have enough information. Because if it's not a person you would trust your child with, why are you just going to go and trust your child's future? You'll learn title and give it to them. What are they? Chris, your parting shot. Um, I, I think, and first of all, li living off from where Colin has started, uh, has ended, um, it's true that there are people who are abusing the role that God has graciously given them to lead people spiritually. And it's not just here in Uganda, it's in Africa, it's in the world. The guys who own private jets are not here in Uganda, but they're oh, in the US. Oh, they are here in Uganda. No, I don't, I don't know anyone. You'll need to educate me. I don't know any pastor here who has a Gulf Stream yet. <laughs> but I know... And he's a pastor. But, but I know that that's a common thing in the US. Um, Jesus said something. He said... You will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their fruit. We know his disciples by their fruit. And, and you compare the fruit of this person with the fruit of Jesus. How much like Jesus do they look? So uh, what I'm saying is that while there are, there are leaders who may do a thing and you're like, mm, and I'm also like, mm, there are others who are genuine. There are others who are leading well, who are humble, who are simple, who are digging in the trenches with people and lifting them up and helping them get better spiritually, um, relationally, with their health, with their intellect, and with their finances. Leaders who are encouraging people to go to church uh, with their brains on, who allow you to think while you are in the congregation, who allow you to question the sermon, and, 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 and weigh it against the word of God. So you make a decision for life that is based on authority. So what I would like to encourage you to do is, is question, like Colin has said, surprisingly, question. Okay? Use the Bible. Absolutely. Use the Bible to question. In the book of Acts, there was a group of people called the Bereans. The Bereans asked the question. Paul would preach, great preacher. But then they'll go back to scripture and say, what does the scripture say? Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. Well, yeah, nice. I pick up from what you said, you know, uh, research, read, you know, we are in, an, uh, in, an in we are, we are in an information age, but, and it's really ironical that, uh, you know, people don't read, you know, we, we get things uh, by, the, by their face value, you know, someone tells you this and, and it's the hard truth. People have, uh, have forgotten to read. You know, I call it the idiot age. You know, when someone tells you something, read, go and research. Like you say that, uh, you know, go and research about this person. I think it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's Colin who said it. Research about his history, you know, where they went to school. Yeah, just read. Google everything. Read your Bible, and there's something my mom always say: read your Bible and involve God. Just don't read it. Pray. Read it, and, and I think you'll understand it, yeah. Great stuff. Captain, your parting shot in one minute. I think the, my position really is that um, being a believer, there are many good preachers out there. And I want those who are 
watching this television because television is there to create a paradigm shift or to find a way in which you can be able to understand better. Our explanation, uh, our narrative here is to try to get people to be logical, uh, to be able to understand things in a very rational way. I do appreciate many of the preachers, many of the apostles, many of the, uh, the pastors, many of the bishops, many of the men of God who continue to maintain the righteous. But again, you don't forget, uh, there's what you call in, I think the, there's one area of line of thought where they say there's the karma. If you take people the wrong way, God will punish you. So my position and my, 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 my general understanding is that use religion to deal with the people of God. Preach the word of God so that people will be able to understand it better, but do not use religion to empower yourself, to replenish your riches, to, to build your capacity as an individual and use it as a means and as a platform to enrich yourself and your family. That would be a major departure from the preaching of the word. And that is what the Bible teaches us. And I want to say that um, to the believers, it is enshrined in our constitution that one has got a right to believe and to follow uh, any religious uh, foundation he believes in. Uh, so in my own understanding, and I want this to be understood by all, Religion and the fear of God is what will take us and make us better human beings. And to me, all the pastors and those who, who are men of God make us better human beings. Thank you very much. Banji, one minute, your parting shot. Uh, yeah, I think uh, much has been said, but um, my parting shot will take me back to my profession. As a professional behaviorist, as a social worker, as a a committed development practitioner, I want to urge people that yes, their problems and all problems can be presented before God, and actually they should be presented before God, but we should know that some problems, while we present them to God, we should also present them to the most relevant institutions that can handle them. In that way, we are not going to be exploited if they are uh, preachers who are exploiting us. Secondly, I want to agree with, the, with Mike here that religion is good for the soul. Okay? A religious soul harbors a good mind. So let us, let us um, practice our religion, but the most important thing is we must also learn the ability to question. You must ask. And you ask and you say, is what the preacher telling me, is it what is written? Does it have relevancy? Okay, with the word of, of, of the Lord. And I think in that way, we will be able to, uh, to, 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 to move forward uh, properly. Great stuff. Thank you, gentlemen. I think I've lost a few kilos. Well, you've heard it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. My final thought is very simple. Religion is based on order. Order is good for every human being. But let's also be sensible about it. Everybody has choices. You can't blame anybody. You can't blame your pastor. It is on you. When you go down, you go down on your own. So be wise. We want to wish you a good night from us here at the Sheraton Kampala Hotel. And don't forget, Your Showman is brought to you by Obulamo. Have a good night and God bless.